Hi guys, what is going on and welcome back to an episode of Conqueror's Blade. So today I want to be talking about silver. So I've kind of touched on this in a few little guides sort of very loosely previously, sort of silver, bronze, honor, but I kind of just wanted to make one guide that talks just about silver and kind of the different way it can be earned. It's kind of because we recently had the new mercenary unit introduced, the Martellatori, and they cost 750,000 silver if you want to buy them in game. And with the sovereign cost being actually really pretty ridiculously high, you know, the silver is really going to be the only way you're going to be wanting to do this. So you're going to have to be sort of getting clever, getting smart and trying to earn as much silver as you can, because it's really all perfectly achievable. So, for example, I've currently got just coming up to a million silver and I've already just brought the Martellatori for 750,000 silver. So it goes to show how kind of possible it is to build up your silver collective there's no benefit from having a premium account it doesn't earn you any extra silver or anything like this this is all earned exactly the same way that you guys can earn it now and i just want to cover the various different ways and the various activities and stuff that you're going to be getting silver for you know how we can perhaps make a little bit of silver off the market rebel camps uh, expeditions completing weekly quests vaults all these things that kind of help all contribute to your overall silver growth i think it is worth saying though there is no sort of really sneaky overnight trick that's going to make you loads of silver in one this is something that builds up over time there's no sort of grinding or farming method to get loads and loads of silver all in one go you're going to run it into sort of these problems continuously so this is something that you have to build up over a number of months and to get a decent amount of silver so firstly i want to talk about uh, rebel camps expeditions uh weekly quests and then how all this ties it in with vaults as well so weekly quests, um, and in that aspect, that's completing expeditions and rebel camps are a great way of getting that little bit of extra silver and something you're going to be wanting to do for a few reasons. So if we go and look at the leadership tab, you will see that every time you complete an expedition three, not only are you getting a little bit of bronze and some, some unit experience, as well as a bit of prestige and house experience for your, for your house, but you're also getting a great campaign reward chest. So that's every time you do a single uh, Expedition 3, up to 3 a week. Plus, it's going to be giving you 3 reward points, or war points, I think they're called, towards completing your weekly quests. So you're going to earn up to 150. So, when you get one of these great campaign rewards, if we hop over to my inventory now, these are ones just a couple I did earlier, if you open them, you're going to get some silver. So, 1,200 silver, straight from the off. An Expedition 3 takes maybe 5 minutes, 10 minutes. Easy silver to be getting. Um, let's open another one, we'll see what we get. There we go, 1,050 silver. So you're going to get an idea, you're going to be getting in and around 1,000. So straight from the off, within sort of 20, maybe 30 minutes, you can easily earn 3,000 silver just from the bonus weekly reward that you're going to be getting from doing your Expedition 3s. Obviously, you are limited to three of those um, uh, per week, but you've also got the Expedition 2s and the Expedition 1s, although you'll find that you'll get a smaller um, amount of rewards Per time you can click on them and you can sort of see some of the stuff you're going to be getting but yeah you'll be getting a small amount of silver and the same is true with rebel camps so every time you do a rebel camp you're going to be getting a greater loyalty reward chest again the same sort of thing when you're opening it you're going to be getting a selection of stuff you're going to be mostly getting honor for this one but you're also going to be getting crafting materials as well as sort of the chance of getting some supplies and some hero schematics but every time you complete a rebel camp and this is, this is a permanent feature no matter how many times you do it, whether it's an easy, medium or hard rebel camp. Every time you complete a rebel camp, you are going to unlock a vault. And we'll cut to a little clip now of me opening a vault. I'm sure you've probably come across these occasionally in siege battles if you've been doing that. And you'll see vaults are going to give you sort of two to 3,000 silver straight from the off. So doing your rebel camp, so doing all your hards, all your mediums, all your easies, it's a great way of getting access to these vaults because you are guaranteed to open a vault if you complete a rebel camp. Now, that leads on to vault keys. So this is the only area really where there is a benefit to having a premium count in this context. So if you open a normal one, so when you're completing your weekly quests, once you get to 25 points, you get your first gift. And it doesn't give you any vault keys. Your second one is going to give you your vault key, first vault key, and then you're going to get two from the third one, and you're going to get four from the final one. So that's four, five, six, seven vault keys you can get per week. Whereas if you have a premium account, you're going to be getting an extra eight. For me personally, because I'm quite lazy, I don't keep on top of my rebel caps very good. I've got, um, well, over 100 vault keys now. So they just sort of build up for me. But by completing them, making sure you're completing, particularly down to this final weekly quest, so you make sure you're getting those four vault keys a week. 
then you should really start to boost the amount of silver you're earning per week. Because remember, each vault is two to 3,000 silver. So those seven keys, you know, that's going to be a really good 20,000 silver, maybe something like that. 15 to 20,000 silver guaranteed per week. And then on top of that, you know, you've got your expeditions. And then let's move on to some of the other areas that you can earn silver. So the next area I want to talk about is sort of rewards for siege and field battles and the market. So when you participate in siege and field battles, the, particularly if you win, or only if you win, there is a chance that you're going to get some random drops. And these can be a pretty selection of random things. For example, one of the more common ones are these little bags of silver, little leather pouch of silver. And they're just a random drop. You often get them at the end, particularly if you win, as I say. Then, then you can just open them and you'll get a random amount of silver. 411, 156, 105. Okay, not a great deal. But, you know, if you're playing a decent amount, it does start to add up. It is something that's, you know, well worth having. I mean, it's free. You're going to get it anyway. So just playing the game gives you a selection of rewards. And there's also a pretty decent chance of you'll get a random equipment drops. So, generally speaking green and blue equipment is not really worth a great deal and the markets are so flooded with it it's really not worth selling so let's actually go and just take a little bit of a look at that if we just pick on a piece of just select common equipment uh, will it give me something uncommon there we go okay sorry i meant green i meant uncommon and then you'll see the so many glaives for example these hair splitters listed at the bottom end price the minimum price which is 1475 the odds of you selling yours really are extraordinarily slim. We're page eight and we're page, let's see, does it ever end? Wow, I must admit there's actually more of these just than even I expected. There we go. Okay, so the price standing fine, fine starts to rise at page 12. So the odds of you selling yours are just so slim. I don't bother listing these. I just break them down at the blacksmith for materials. Hope you get a little bit of silver powder and that's really useful as a crafting material later on. I tend to follow the same sort of principle once you get to blue stuff. You know, maybe you can do. This stuff tends not to sell tremendously well. I think for me, you know, you once you get to start, some of these are actually crafted stuff so it's not so bad. Um, because these are things, these aren't drops, these are things people have actually handcrafted. But for me, I tend to sell epic and above. So you'll often get things like burners, these are ones that have just been dropped in siege battles, just random uncrafted so they get no attribute boosts, and they're still only four or five thousand, but that is starting to get to the point where it's a little bit more worthwhile selling, and there's not so many of them available, a bit more fluctuation in price, so you can actually price keep and stand a chance of actually selling some of this stuff. So that is worth doing. And you'll find that random drops aren't that rare some of the really rare stuff okay is going to be pretty unlikely to find but even things like some of the rare curious schematics um let's find one uh something like that a rare boot schematic for example or a rare curious schematic over here and these are unbound you know i may be getting one of them every maybe 30 50 games so maybe one a week something like that maybe one every two weeks and they're worth currently at the moment i think they're retailing about thirty thousand silver that's partly because we've just hit a new season, so there's a lot more of them about because they can be purchased in the seasonal store. Um, but, you know, normally you would expect them to retail, particularly towards the end of the season, I would expect them to be sort of 50, 60,000 silver. So getting one of them can give a real big boost to the amount of silver you're getting. And all this stuff can quite easily be sold. For example, we're just going to see here, I recently just picked up this, uh, literally actually in the last game, I picked up this legendary artillery component just because someone placed an artillery down, a big cannon, and we managed to overrun the position. And because I was the one who managed to destroy that artillery, I managed to get the um, component drop. So we can actually sell this. Um, we'll actually just have a quick check on the market, see what the um, uh, the value of them are. Uh, artillery components. Let's go down to legendary. And we'll see these are currently retailing about, well, the cheapest is 8,400 uh, silver. So let's pop this on. You can see it will give you a minimum and a maximum price. So I can't go below uh, 8,400. I'll whack it on for the three days. Might as well get that listed because I'm not going to bother turning that in. Uh, so that's 8,400 silver. That's a pretty decent amount of silver to get just from completing one match. So you can earn silver a lot of the ways in this stuff. One area, and well, a second area I'd like to touch on is kind of market trading. This game really isn't set up for market trading. And it's something people ask sometimes is, can you make money doing market trading? Generally speaking, not very easily. But there are a few ways, possibly. So we touched on a little bit earlier when I was talking about hero schematics, um, not hero weapon schematics, hero schematics, and we'll go back to rare ones. 
and you'll see at the moment i feel these are fairly cheap so you could buy um say some of the curious schematics 33,000. in my opinion this is kind of a bit cheaper than it will be at the end of the season but this is really ultimately gambling in the truest sense of the word because you're banking on the fact that these are going to go up when you buy an item off the market, it gets um, bound to you for a period of time, normally around five days, something like that. And then you are stuck with that item. So you can't resell it until those five days have passed and then you can put it back on the market. So you cannot really flip items very easily in this game. They don't want you to be doing that. If you're looking over a number of months, maybe I would be, con you know, you could consider purchasing a number of these if you had an excess of silver um, with the intention of selling them again later on in the game. But, you know, remember the game is constantly changing, balance are being introduced, etc. And, yeah, it's not necessarily a guaranteed profit. It's something you'd be gambling on kind of a lot. So, particularly if you've not got very much silver, I wouldn't recommend it. But considering it's something people ask about a reasonable amount, I just wanted to touch on it. It's hard to market trade. Not something I really dabble in um, really too much at the moment. The only one I think I kind of am interested in are generally um, weapon schematics. Because I think these personally tend to be underpriced. Apart from the Windcatcher bow, which there seems to be an awful lot about of them. But any, any other class tends to not have very many of them. Like, for example, there's only one that's actually currently listed. I think that's quite cheap at 23000 But the way the price cap currently works is um, means you can't list them for more. But I think at some point that may end up changing, in my opinion. But we shall see. So, we have covered rewards from siege battles. We have covered um, weekly quests. We have covered rebel camps. We've covered expeditions. And we've covered trading on the market. But we haven't yet covered joining a house and territory wars. And we haven't really covered resource gathering and how that can kind of work. So, these are two kind of more interesting areas. So, for territory wars. So, if you were to join um, a player-run house. And, say, it was a reasonable sized house. And they, at the end of the drill mode here, once we... The territory ward kicks off which i believe is uh, later on next week then you will find that you can go out and conquer territory so when you do that there's two ways of earning silver if you are in the attacking party that say say we attack Gao queen down here and take it you're going to get half of the treasury that is currently in that town so in this case it would be 48 so that'd be 24,000 split between the attackers so not particularly a great deal in this case but some towns do have pretty large treasuries so you can get a pretty decent amount of money from the off but beyond that you're then going to get a weekly tribute payout which is split between your house so if you're a house of 50 people and you own three villages in a town all the silver income that those villages and town generates is then going to be distributed amongst the people in the house you'll see so you'll get it as a payout you'll get it in a mail you'll see you'll get a mail and it says you know congratulations here is your tribute of 3000 silver coins or something like that and a skill page so you can get all these things um from taking part in territory wars so it can be quite a good way of getting a little bit of extra silver in that sense and then finally we have resource connection so currently in the open world you can go out and gather everything because it's currently all owned by the ai it's going to get a little bit more um, complicated once it becomes owned by houses because it's going to get clamped down a little bit on some houses may want to not let you collect resources from their territory but you effectively particularly if you own land are going to be able to go out go to somewhere like say this oak logging camp which currently has uh, 548,000 oak logs and gather resources from there you'll have daily yields and you'll be able to use um, requisition orders up until the point that those resources are depleted and that is something that has changed in the season 3 patch you used to be able to continue to collect resources with requisition tokens even after the reserves have been fully depleted so that means that uh, resources are now actually going to be a little bit more scarce because the total volume of resources in the world has been shrunk slightly but still, you can go out and basically spend your bronze to collect these resources. And resource collection is always costing in bronze. However, you can sell those resources on the market, not for bronze, but for silver. So for example, if we go uh, copper ore, or what we were looking at, we were looking at oak one, which is a timber. And if we go to rare, you'll see, so for say 48,000 uh, oak timber here, this is the cheapest price, that is 10,000 silver profit. Well, if you use five units of fully upgraded serfs, you will get 48,000 pretty much in one collection. So you can sort of basically take, if you're using your daily gathers, that's maybe say two or three or 4,000 bronze to turn that into 10,000 silver. 
So resource collection and resource then selling on the market can be a great way of making a little bit of extra silver. Particularly now we have the added benefit of uh, regional collections, i.e. I can buy something from further away and because it's uh, I can have it shipped to me for an extra 800 silver. So this is going to mean it's going to be easier to sell resources kind of cross regionally because people can have them delivered to them. Although, as I say, might be a bit harder to actually find resources in the open world. It's going to be a little bit more competitive now they're not going to be so easily available but hopefully that gives you sort of a number of different ways you can think about going about making silver as i say if you're not directly desperate for it then just playing siege battles and getting a bit lucky on some of the drops you get can be quite a nice way of just getting a little bit extra particularly if you get something like one of those rare curious schematic drops you know that's thirty thousand silver just like that just a click of the fingers and you'll soon find yourself building up your silver it can feel really daunting at first as a new player kind of seeing 750,000 it feels like such a long way away to be able to afford something like um, some of the mercenary units helps if I press the right button um, you know because these guys 750,000 the cheapest I think are these black dragon archers at 250,000 silver you know some of these units can feel like such a long way away but they really are achievable think about them in the long term think about it in a month's time and then the silver gain actually starts to become a lot more possible and it's really not that hard to do. Anyway, thank you for watching guys. Hopefully it's been useful. If you have any questions about this or anything I've not explained quite clearly enough and you want to ask, put them down in the comments down below and I will get back to you and try and answer your questions as best as I can. Thanks for watching guys and I shall see you all on the next video.